Hello and welcome to the final part of my presentation on Parallels to Jesus in the Lord of the Rings. In this section we will analyze in how far the highlight of Aragorn's life, making Arwen his queen, reflects the most important event in Jesus' life, his marriage with his bride. For both in the Lord of the Rings and in real life, the culmination of history is a royal wedding. What gave Aragorn the courage and strength to fight was the prospect of marrying Arwen. The first and foremost reason Aragorn wanted to be king was that he could win the hand of his beloved and make her his, because Elrond would then consent to the marriage. Arwen's father had stated, She shall not be the bride of any man less than the king of both Gondor and Arnor. Arwen actually made the standard Aragorn fought under. He unfurled it first when he summoned the dead to fight for him as the rightful king. This was at the Stone of Eric, also called the Black Stone, at midnight. The banner seemed black then, its emblems could not be seen. When he arrived at the field of battle in daylight to save the day, it showed the white tree and seven stars and crown, which are worked into the fabric with jewels, mithril and gold. These two instances of unfurling the banner can be seen as symbolizing death and resurrection. For both, the banner of his beloved is with the hero and gives him courage and strength to fight. Similarly, what gave Jesus the strength to endure the ordeal of the cross, his battle was the prospect of winning his bride. Hebrews 12 states that for the joy set before him he endured the cross. This joy was you, me, everyone who would say yes to him. This joy was the relationship he would subsequently be able to have with us. He says it even more clearly in Song of Songs 4. You have ravished my heart and given me courage, my sister, my bride. You have ravished my heart and given me courage with one look from your eyes, with one jewel of your necklace. Speaking of necklace, the even star pendant in the film version, which Aragorn wears as a token of their relationship, might well be seen as a parallel to that half-verse. Without Arwen as his queen, Aragorn was incomplete, his reign was incomplete, and his joy was incomplete. In the books, the wedding is not combined with the coronation as it is in the films, so after he has taken up the reign of Gondor, the hobbits prepare to leave him to return to the Shire. Here is what he says to them. At last, all such things must end. But I would have you wait a little while longer, for the end of the deeds that you have shared in has not yet come. A day draws near that I have looked for in all the years of my manhood, and when it comes I would have my friends beside me. Even when Aragorn had been inaugurated as king, the white tree of Gondor, symbol of the realm of Gondor and the line of kings, was still dead. Aragorn had to search in the mountains together with Gandalf to find a new sapling stemming from the old tree. When the wedding was imminent, he actually found it, and he understood it as a sign that Arwen would soon arrive now and the time of their union had finally come. This white tree, brought originally from Valinor, located in the undying lands, strongly reminds of the tree of life in the Bible growing in paradise, which is actually a symbol of Jesus' relationship with his bride and their mutual delight in each other. In Revelation 2 he says, To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. 
In a way, Jesus himself is the tree of life, who offers the Garden of Eden to us once again. When Arwen chooses Aragorn over everything else in their betrothal narrated in Appendix A to the Lord of the Rings, she is compared to a white tree. And she stood then as still as a white tree, looking into the west, and at last she said, I will cleave to you, Dúnedain, and turn from the twilight. In the same way, in the Song of Songs, the bride chooses Solomon over everyone else, which is a prefiguration or symbolic rendering of Jesus and his bride. And here, too, we have the tree metaphor. Like an apple tree among the trees of the forest is my beloved among the young men. The betrothal between God and his bride is depicted in the Bible with the following words. I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice, in love and compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness, and you will know the Lord. This bridal metaphor or bridal paradigm can be read on three different levels portraying the relationship between God and Israel, between Jesus and his people, the universal church, that is all those who choose him because bridal love has voluntary choice as a prerogative, and thirdly, the love relationship between Jesus and each individual soul. For just as Jesus died for all humanity collectively and yet for each person individually, he will be the bridegroom of all humanity that says yes to him collectively and of each person individually. For him this is possible because he is not only man but also God. He is infinite and can give a hundred percent of his devotion and attention to each person simultaneously and love each of us so fully and uniquely that each is in a way his only one. Here is one difference to Aragorn. Jesus would not have to reject Eowyn as a lover. Aragorn had to do this in order to remain faithful to Arwen, even though he did it very delicately and sensitively, and it pained him almost as much as Eowyn. Jesus, however, rejects no one. He says, whoever comes to me I will never drive away. And yet, he can still love each of us a hundred percent faithfully and exclusively. Finally, let's have a look at the wedding ceremony. Like the coronation, this is described in similar terms both in the Return of the King and the Book of Revelation. Again, I have marked corresponding passages with the same colors. Tolkien, upon the very eve of midsummer came Master Elrond, and beside him, upon a grey palfrey, rode Arwen his daughter, even star of her people. Revelation, one of the seven angels said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Tolkien and Frodo, when he saw her come glimmering in the evening, with stars on her brow and a sweet fragrance about her, said to Gandalf, At last I understand why we have waited. This is the ending. Now not day only shall be beloved, but night too shall be beautiful and blessed and all its fear pass away. A corresponding passage to this description of Arwen could be seen in Revelation 12, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and a crown of twelve stars on her head. Frodo's exclamation that night too shall now be beautiful and blessed and its fear pass away corresponds to Revelation 21. 
God will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Tolkien Then the king welcomed his guests, and they alighted, and Elrond surrendered the scepter and laid the hand of his daughter in the hand of the king, and together they went up into the high city, and all the stars flowered in the sky. And Aragorn, the king Elessa, wedded Aben und Domiel in the city of kings upon the day of midsummer, and the tale of their long waiting and labors was come to fulfillment. Revelation I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, which is used as a metonymy of the people living in it, coming down out of heaven from God, arrayed like a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. So both in Tolkien's epic trilogy and in the history of our universe, the union between the king and his bride is the culmination of their life stories, spreading their bliss on their surroundings. In our case, we can even say that this is the purpose of the existence of the universe. This is the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to contact me with any questions you might have. Thank you for your attention.